joined now by Rochelle Riley. She is the Director of Arts and Culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship for the City of Detroit and the author of That They Lived. Rochelle, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you back on the show. So we, ha uh, we have coming up in a couple of weeks, not next week, but the week after. On Thursday, October 28th, you'll be a guest speaker at Spazita's Restaurant in West Bloomfield for um, the Rotary Club of, of West Bloomfield and West Bloomfield Public Libraries a speaking event ca called A Frank Conversation About Race. So just give us a little bit of a preview about what you will be discussing with the audience at that, at, at that event on October 28th. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm honored to be on your show again. Uh, I, I was asked by these two entities who work so hard on relationships and do great work in West Bloomfield to talk a little bit about what people are finally starting to talk about across the country and have been uh, for the past year since George Floyd was murdered. And, and it's just how we're living with each other or not living with each other and finally seeing each other in some cases for the first time. So we're going to talk about whatever people want to talk about. It will be a conversation. But I, I want to remind people of two things. One is that we cannot hide the history of America to feel better or to you know pretend like it didn't happen. And enslavement still impacts, the vestiges of that still impact how many African-Americans live. And also that there's so much to celebrate about African-American history that we should not be relegating it to one month a year, but should teach that all the time. And I think it will change the way kids grow up looking at each other and the adults that they become. We're joined by Rochelle Riley. She's the Director of Arts and Culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship for the City of Detroit. She'll be making a speech on October 28th at Spazita's Restaurant in West Bloomfield with the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield and the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. You can still get tickets to that event, uh, but those tickets are going quickly, so get them, at, so get them as soon as you can uh, as that event continues to fill up quite quickly. And, and Rochelle, uh, there is that that quote that's kind of a cliche but it's a cliche for a reason because it because it, it it's meaningful and it and it resonates and that is that those that are that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it and part of having a conversation like this about having a frank conversation about race is that uh, if we don't learn from the history if we don't identify the parts of our history, the, the, not so, the not so lovely parts of our country's history, particularly as it pertains to race, which most of, of that does, uh, in this case, pertain to race. Most of those not so lovely parts of our American history here do pertain to race. If we're not identifying those and speaking critically about them and speaking about how far we've come and how far we still need to go, we're, we're ultimately doomed to continue to make those same mistakes and be circling back to this point again and again and again, as we have been doing since this country's onset. Well, the, the sad thing about racism in America is that we have never really changed. We just adapted. So there, there's yeah. always been some sense of first and second class citizenship in this country. And, and what's really sad is if after the Civil War, uh, America had embraced what was happening with Reconstruction when there were black senators and people were treated, you know, equally. We would have a whole different America. But of course, hate rose then, and there were people who did not want black Americans to succeed the same way as white Americans. And so you wound up with every effort to make sure there was some semblance of an enslavement system, you know, second class citizenship. And that's what led to Jim Crow laws that a lot of young people are not even learning about now. We have in America been teaching this myth of America, you know, that this country was founded on theft and torture. This land was taken from indigenous folks who were already here. And then you had almost 250 years of free labor that built this country. And the idea that we don't teach that because it might make someone feel bad or it might make us look bad. We, we have been teaching, we've been teaching a, a, a sort of separate America. We, we have instilled that into how we, have done our, our American narrative, and, it, and it's gotta change. And one of the things that worries me is this rise in opportunities to teach about black history and it being called critical race theory and people trying to ban it. They don't wanna talk about enslavement. One prominent uh, newspaper publisher said that, you know, it might harm some of the efforts that are going on to atone for enslavement. And I'm like, what is he talking about? What are these things that he's talking about? So it, it's time for America to be honest with itself so that we can finally, finally, 
live a different lifestyle, live a different way, and and be more uh, caring to each other about what what has gone on in the past, and also to just be a better country. If everybody is given the opportunity to succeed at their best, there are no limits. We're joined by Rochelle Riley. She's the director of arts and culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship for the city of Detroit. She is also the author of That They Live, and she will be speaking on October 28th. That's a Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. at Spasita's Restaurant in West Bloomfield in partnership with the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield, as well as the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. And what's really uh, important going into the conversation for anybody that is attending and for, and for those that maybe aren't able to attend uh, for one reason or another, but are also considering these issues that affect America and, and uh, American history in its relation to race, and it is directly related to to racial issues uh, in every single category and from every single angle. The question that needs to be asked, uh, regardless of your walk of life here in the, in the American world, is whether or not it's better to identify the problems, to take a less fanciful look at the history of this country and make improvements and become a better country, or to continue to gloss over those major issues, those humanitarian issues, those moral issues, ethical issues that have plagued this country since day one and, and, uh, and avoid resolving those issues. Because if you don't identify an issue, if you don't critically analyze an issue and discuss it from both those that are perpetuating it intentionally or not and those who are affected by it, then no, no solutions can truly be made. And we end up in a situation kind of like we are now, where we're circling back to discussing ways that voter, that uh, quote unquote voter suppression laws across this country, including here in the state of Michigan, may affect people in, uh, in the communities that are at a significant disadvantage and aren't able to obtain photo IDs and other required effects in order to be able to vote, which is also an issue that relates to race as well. And so do you want me to address voter suppression or yeah, yeah, ways because that, that people are discriminated yeah, against? Sure, because that's one of the many issues that this, that this conversation uh, certainly would relate to. Well, what has been odd and what is never talked about is how many times we've amended the law, amended the Constitution, mm -hmm. to um, make sure we're no longer breaking it. We, we should not have to have uh, voter, uh, voting rights acts. Uh, the, the 1965 Voting Rights Act is the way that so many people in my history and in my family were allowed to vote. So while some women uh, celebrate suffrage from 1920, that doesn't apply to most black women. And, and the idea that we now have a rise in, in every effort in all, uh, numerous states to try to keep people from voting. It's one of the most un-American things I have ever seen. And I think that by the time you look at the different ways that people are harmed, whether it's, you know, we, we went from during enslavement, it was illegal to teach black Americans to read. Now, you know, th there are efforts to not give black kids the same education as white kids. Um, I, I think what we've done is really just sort of ingrained segregation and discrimination into our, the way our country operates. And we have to change that in every form, whether it's with law enforcement or whether it's with education or whether it's with history. If we take an honest look at ourselves, then we can better ourselves. We're joined by Rochelle Riley. She is the Director of Arts and Culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship with the City of Detroit. She is also the author of That They Lived, which she uh, had released in, last February. And Rochelle, for those that uh, didn't watch our, our episode or, uh, or your interview when you were on with us previously to talk about That They Lived, tell us a little bit about the origins of that book, because it has a really interesting backstory that led you into writing that. Well, thank you for asking about that. My first book, The Burden, came out in 2018. But that year that I was working on it in 2017, I went online, as I do every day, because I'm a social media junkie, and I saw these beautiful uh, portraits of a little girl who was embodying the spirit of and dressed as famous, iconic African-American women. And I was just enamored. And I thought, that's so awesome. But I was on deadline on the burden, so I didn't do anything. That was all of February. There's a picture, a new picture every day. Well, when the book, came, when the burden came out in 2018, I looked online and lo and, and behold, there they were again, this little girl embodying Shirley Chisholm and Aretha Franklin. And um, just amazing and important women, you know, 
and, and I thought, I have got to find out who this is. So I found the Seattle homemaker who was an amateur photographer who posted these pictures. And I said, I love what you're doing. What made you do this? She said, I wanted to teach my daughter about African-American history, and this was a way to do it. And I said, well, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. I bet I can do a thousand words on every one of these women that your daughter is portraying. And she said, oh, no, I could never do that. And I said, of course you can. And she didn't want to. She just thought that was something that was too big. So I got on a plane and flew to Seattle and got in a car and drove to Kent, Washington and took her family to lunch and said, please let me do this book. So she agreed, and uh, with those photographs, what we're doing is trying to show every child that uh, every famous person, every important person was once a child. So each of these inspirational essays that I wrote begins with what those famous people were doing at that moment in their childhood where you knew their lives had changed. It's Muhammad Ali deciding to learn to box at 12 because someone stole his bike, or Shirley Chisholm uh, having to be sent to another country to learn because they couldn't afford to live near the one school she could go to. or. Um, Thurgood Marshall, uh, probably the greatest attorney in the history of America, who argued uh, 32 cases before the U.S. Supreme Court and won 29 of them. As a boy, his father would take him to court with him so he could understand how the court system worked. He didn't tell him to become a lawyer, but he sure made it easy. So, so that's what those stories are about. And um, the, the pictures of these kids, you know, as Duke Ellington and Martin Luther King and Stevie Wonder and uh, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer are, are just lovely. And, and important for, for all kids to know. It's a really, yeah, it's a really interesting piece, and uh, you'll be able to get a title, uh, a copy of that they lived, African Americans who changed the world. When you go and attend uh, Rochelle's speaking event with the West Bloomfield Rotary and the West Bloomfield Township Public Library, that is next week. That is two weeks from uh, yesterday. That's Thursday, October 28th at 7:30 a.m. at Spazita's Restaurante in West Bloomfield. Register online at westbloomfieldrotary.org. And, and Rochelle, Rochelle, since you released that book, what has been the reaction um, from those that have read it, that have purchased the book, and have uh, experienced those? stories through this unique perspective? Well, it has been stunning and quite humbling. Um, some school districts are using it for their classes. One professor at Vanderbilt who teaches how to teach early education is a part of their you know, teacher program. She's using it as a part of the curriculum to teach teachers how to teach literature to young kids. Um, but the most important reaction came from my grandson, Caleb, who was the boy who portrayed all the men in the book. Um, when I sent it to his house, I didn't ask him what he thought. I asked his mom and said, just just tell me if he looks at it and reads it or if he just puts it aside. And she said he sat down and read the entire essay on Muhammad Ali and said, oh, man, that was cool. So that was the reaction I wanted, and that was the one that was most important. But I have heard from so many people that this is something that's needed for kids to learn some of these histories of people who should be a part of their history classes anyway. We're joined by Rochelle Riley. She's the Director of Arts and Culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship for the City of Detroit. She's also the author of That They Lived, and you will be able to get a copy of that, uh, of that book when you, uh, when you uh, get, purchase tickets to attend her speaking event with the West Bloomfield Rotary Club and the West Bloomfield Township Public Library Thursday, October 28th at 7.30 a.m. Tickets are $25 each, and you can get them at West Bloomfield Rotary. Dot org. And Rochelle, as the Director of Arts, Col uh, Arts and Culture at the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship for the City of Detroit, uh, I, I want to give you a few minutes while we're at the tail end of this interview to, to talk about uh, the nation's largest 3D mural in Detroit uh, that uh, calls attention to hunger issues in African-American communities. Uh, tell us a little bit about this art piece and about the story behind it. Well, the United Nations and its longtime program to end world hunger uh, worked with artists to choose seven, I think six or seven cities across the country to uh, uh, host these murals. They're huge. This one is on the side of the Frank Murphy Courthouse, which is, you know, like stories and stories of space. And um, what they're doing is finding ways to make sure people understand that hunger should not be a problem in America, especially in African American communities. So the artists have been working on that. They're going to finish it in about a week, and it is, uh, it's stunning. But it has a purpose, as a lot of murals do, and that's to make sure that we pay attention to the fact that there are children in this country 
who literally are without food. And, and there are great programs like Forgotten Harvest in Detroit that work on that problem, but it's something we should all be concerned about. So we were so thrilled to have that piece of art to come to Detroit. It's, it's no different than when we celebrated the singer Aaliyah, who died tragically uh, 20 years ago. Uh, Detroit was one of nine cities around the world that was chosen to host uh, honors to her. And we did videos, we shot videos of her on the side of City Hall, which had never been done before, but also had an Aaliyah drone show uh, at Irma Henderson Park downtown. And you can see that uh, on clickondetroit.com because we partnered with Local 4 to live stream that to folks so they didn't have to come out. We're still aware of the pandemic. And uh, of course, that la the largest 3D mural in the city of Detroit is calling attention to hunger issues within the African within African American communities uh, in our local area and throughout the country as well. And those are issues that also tie back to uh, the racial tensions and racial disparities and, frankly, injustices throughout the entirety of our United States history that Rochelle will be speaking about at her speaking event on Thursday, October 28th at 7.30 a.m. at Pazita's Restaurante in West Bloomfield. That is in partnership with the West Bloomfield Township Public Library and the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield. You can purchase tickets for $25. It includes a breakfast buffet and a signed copy of Rochelle's book, That They Lived, African Americans Who Changed the World. And be part of that conversation and purchase your tickets by going to westbloomfieldrotary.org. Rochelle, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.